Pre-Calculus Unit 2, Lesson 5, Complex Zeros and the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. So if we were to find all the zeros, both real and imaginary, and factor it, the fundamental theorem says that if it's an nth degree, then it has to have n roots, real and non-real, put together. Some of those can be repeated, meaning they can have a multiplicity of more than one, but there have to be a total of n zeros. So since this is third degree, it has to have three complex roots. Since this is fourth degree, it has to have four complex roots. The linear factorization theorem says that if you can find each one of those complex roots, again, they can be imaginary roots, then your function has to be able to factor into the leading coefficient times x minus c1, x minus c2, up until x minus cm. So a is the leading coefficient. You have to remember to put that out in front. So if I happen to have this polynomial and I know that these are the zeros and I want it in the linear factored form, put the 2 out in front, x minus a half, and then you put x minus each one of these imaginary numbers will give you this. And then I'll just note every time you have a fraction, there must be a leading coefficient there to get rid of that denominator. And if there were more than one, you might have to split it up like if it if one was a half and one was a third, there might be a six out in front, and you would have to split up two with one and three with the other. But you would take the two times that x minus one half to give the alternative two x minus one, which has the same zero. Now, what do we know about complex zeros? So if we're allowing complex zeros, if we have real coefficients, then imaginary ones have to come in pairs. And of course, all of our polynomials do have real coefficients that we look at. If a plus bi is a zero, then a minus bi has to be a zero. If we had imaginary coefficients, this would not apply. So if I know two minus four i is a root, two plus four i has to be a root. If we know three minus two square roots of five, then we know three plus two square roots of five, not because that's imaginary, but because we know the irrationals also have to come in pairs. If we have minus three, we don't know anything. We do not know that three has to be a root. This is not irrational, has no imaginary part. And then two i, we would know that. We know minus two i. So if it's just a real part, we don't know anything. But if it has an imaginary part only, then we do know that. Irreducible over the reals describes a polynomial with no real zeros. So every polynomial with real coefficients can be written as a product of linear factors and then irreducible polynomials. And that would be also called a factorization of the polynomial. So the linear factorization is all of them with real and imaginary. When we combine the imaginaries together, if we multiply this times this, that will give me an irreducible quadratic. If we have an ax squared plus b, where both a and b are positive, that's always irreducible because it will always have imaginary roots. If we have 1, 2 minus i, and 2 plus i are factors of a polynomial with a leading coefficient of 2, write the polynomial as a product of its complex linear factors, then write the polynomial as a product of its linear and irreducible quadratic factors. So the linear factorization with non-real factors would be what? We would have to put the leading coefficient and then x minus each one of those zeros, which simplifies to this. Then we're going to combine the imaginary ones together. So this is an imaginary pair. We're going to combine those two. Again, we can group this like this. This is now an a plus a b and an a minus a b. So it's going to give this one squared minus this one squared. We now multiply all that out. We will get this polynomial. And then we would leave this linear one by itself. So this is in terms of its linear and irreducible quadratic pairs. So now how many roots could we have? Again, because imaginary have it happen to come in pair, if it's an odd degree, it has to have at least one real, because the other ones then, the leftovers, could come in imaginary pairs, but one of them at least has to be real. Even you could have all imaginary or all real, so second degree, you could have either zero real or two real. You can't have one, because again, that would be left with one without a pair. For the third, you can have either zero that are imaginary and three real, or two imaginary and one real. For fourth, you can have zero imaginary and four real, two imaginary and two real, four imaginary and zero real. For the fifth, you can have zero imaginary and five real, or two imaginary and three real, or four and one, and so on. Again, odd degrees have to have at least one real, so it has to have at least one actual x-intercept in the graph. 
even roots do not. They can either be all above or all below the x-axis. Odd ones have to actually pass through the x-axis. How do imaginary zeros affect a graph? So imaginary zeros, they could have a turn above or below the x-axis, but not actually touching the x-axis. So now suppose I want to find all the zeros of my polynomial. First you would do what? You would give your possible rational roots as starting points. Then you could look at a graphing calculator to suggest, or you would have to try these and use the rules about positive and negative roots to help you eliminate some. If you try two thirds, it's a zero. If you try two, it's a zero. And then you're left with a quadratic. You would want to solve that using quadratic methods. That gives you two imaginary zeros. If you identify each one as type, these two are rational and these two are imaginary. None of them are irrational. And then if you give the linear factorization, of course that includes all the imaginary. And when you say just the factorization, that includes the irreducible quadratics where you combine the imaginary pairs. So the factorization would include irrationals as linear. Only the imaginary pairs would be combined. But if this were, say, square root of 2 and the square root of 2, you would leave each of those. You would not combine those.